Today we're going to take a look at what is one inch. A lot of you guys have already pointed out the very obvious that one inch is about this big and as you can see that would not really fit well inside this camera box. It really wouldn't fit anywhere in here. Also because in here we also have an optical device and an aperture and then of course a sensor somewhere in the back here. So we're not going to get a one inch chip sensor in here anywhere. The sensor that's in here is called a one inch chip, but its diagonal size is actually closer to 16 millimeter. Let me show you what that's about. So that's going down to right about here. That's 16 millimeter. So if you look, so if you look, that is about this size here on the front of the camera, 16 millimeter. You can look it up at home. Now that's what, when you see the Phantom 4 Pro had a one inch sensor, and now the Mavic 2 Pro has a one inch sensor. That is what, that's the sensor size that all of those birds are using. Now the original Mavic Pro had a two, had a 1.23 size sensor. I'm not even sure how you pronounce a decimal fraction. Somebody can probably help me with that. But that is a one slash 2.3 sensor in here in this little camera in the original Mavic. The same size sensor we also found inside this one, the Evo, that also has a one slash 2.3, 2.3 sensor. And again, we find that sensor inside the little Mavic Air. That's a teeny little camera with a fixed focal length lens and it has the same fairly small sensor. Now the one thing we obviously saw is development goes really fast because the image quality from the original Mavic was not very good. And the Mavic Air definitely had a better image quality, at least mine did. And then earlier this year out came the Evo, which has a very good 1 slash 2.3 size sensor. It was so good in fact that it actually competed in image quality with the Phantom 4 Pro that has a 1 inch sensor. So size is not everything but we got to come back to why size do matter. But basically as time goes a smaller sensor today was definitely able to give a larger sensor from last year a run for its money. That's not really surprising because I have a full frame sensor here that must be about 14 years old. This is a Nikon, sorry, Kodak N14. And if we take the lid off that, you see how big we're looking at in here. That is 36 millimeter wide by 24 millimeter high. So that's a full frame photographic sensor and it has 14 megapixels. So that's an old lens compared to today on the quote unquote one inch sensor, we get 20 megapixels. So everything changes and the sensor images from this camera blows this camera away. Yet it has some advantages because you get very good shallow depth of field and larger pits should also give you less noise when shooting long exposures or in low light during the night or similar. Of course, with this camera here, that doesn't apply because the camera by today's standard is crap, but it was a cool camera when it came out. So gents, I have brought an iPad and I'm going to try to lay this out for you in a way that you can understand and I'm going to try to explain it to myself as we go. So hang on there. It's going to be a little slow, but I'm going to get all these sensors laid out on paper for you. And I hope you can see and also I'm going to try to get the iPad to record this and you can follow along on the screen and find an app to draw in. So starting with the small stuff, that's the sensor in the air the old Mavic and the Evo, all right? 6.3 millimeter by 4.7 millimeter. So that is really small stuff. Here is six millimeter. That is how wide it is from side to side by 4.7 high. So it's about six by five millimeter. Let's draw it in a little bit bigger here so we can all see. So I am drawing the box here and this is 6.3 by 4.7.
and it's called one slash 2.3. So that's our dimensions right here. Now, the one inch sensor, let's grab another color, but why don't we make it blue? The one inch sensor is a bit bigger. It's almost exactly four times bigger. So there you have it. That one, as I said, is of course 16 millimeter diagonally here. However, it is 13.2 by 8.8 millimeters. So it's 13.2 millimeters wide in here and it's 8.8 .8 millimeters tall. It's almost a centimeter tall. Moving right along, the next camera up here is my X5 from my, for the Inspire. And just so you can see, here it is. If I push it in, you can see the sensor inside right here. I don't know if I can get some light so you can really see it. So that again is quite a lot bigger than the next lens down. Put that one in, and lock it. And there's a reason people buy this. Let's show you what that comes to look like. It goes about a third larger yet again. So we come up here and then we have the height here, there and there. And that one is 17 millimeter by 13 millimeter. So there you have it. That's a micro four thirds. I should write that here. M four three. And down here we should write one inch. And let's grab another color again. Let's do a red one. So here, now the next one up here then actually becomes a motion picture film frame. And that one is gonna be 22 millimeter wide by 16 high. And that's because if you look at an old film strip, you know it has perforation on both sides and the film frames were actually fitted horizontally in between when the film ran this way. So that frame comes in right about here. Like that. So we have 22 millimeter by 16 millimeter. And on the side of that frame, we would then have perforation so that it can run through the camera. All right, so I've drawn that in here. Now you know what that all is about. The last frame I'm gonna show you is the full frame. And let's just call that one black since that's kind of our standard. So we're gonna drag all the way out here, all the way up there. And there we have it. So here is 35 millimeter by 24 millimeter. And that is, so that is in full frame film, but it's not really full frame. That's just a word people have come up with. The reason people come up with that word is of course because it's full frame on this camera, but what if you are shooting roll film 220, then it's 60 by 60 millimeter, that would be the full frame. So references are always a bit loose. When talking about these sensor sizes, what really matters is that if you have a sensor the size of my thumb, and then you have a sensor that is four times bigger, like what we saw here, what it means is, because notice this one is 20 megapixel, but there's also 12 megapixel one inch sensors. And this one here is a 12 megapixel micro four thirds sensor. But as you can tell, the micro four thirds sensor is about eight, one, two, three, four. So it's about eight times, maybe 10 times the real estate of the first smaller sensor. That means when you have a long exposure, the pocket that the light falls into is going to be bigger. So when, if you had just a shot glass and you put it out in the rain, some of the drops might miss it, but if you put a soup bowl all out, you're gonna get a more average distribution of rain in each of these balls. And that means you're gonna get a smoother grade graduation with less noise in the file. So that's why we like a bigger one. And as you can see, the one inch sensor in this one versus the smaller sensor in the original Mavic has four times the amount of real estate. So that is going to give you better night photography. However, it's not gonna get you a whole lot during daytimes when the sun is bright. It is probably still gonna show some measurable distance differences. However, not quite as strong. Okay, 
Let's get back to the one inch. How did this 16 millimeter size become one inch? There's actually a simple explanation for that. So hang on. In the good old days, when I started working in television, we had Sony tubes in the cameras. There was three sensor tubes. When light fell on them, it could be registered and converted into an electronic signal. The tubes were round, so they were like round tubes and they were one inch in diameter, so they were 26 millimeter from side to side. So the front of the tube would look like this, and that was two six millimeter equals one inch, right? So the tube looks from the side, it looked kind of like this. And then it had some pins here for attachment and up here was the front where it received signal and it always had a little bit of a curve to it it was not perfect because of that they realized we can only use center of that now see where we're going with this here we have our diagonal which is one inch however this diagonal became 16 millimeter. So you have 16 and then you have five and you have five. 16 plus five plus five is 26 millimeter and there is the one inch. So that was what they found out was the amount of ratio real estate on front of a cathode tube that they could actually use to get a high quality picture. And that means it was a one inch sensor, but the actual usage space was only 16 millimeter diagonal. So there you have it. Cathode tubes in old fashioned better cam cameras is how we today are calling a 16 millimeter sensor, a one inch sensor. I have been measuring the dynamic range of this and comparing it to this and also to the Phantom 4 Pro and of course to this cool little baby here, the Mavic Air. So I am going to put my next video, we're going to be looking at some of those strips and we're going to see how dynamic range stacks up to each other. In the meantime, go ahead and share this video. Please subscribe, like or dislike and whatever you do, sound off below in the comment and tell me what I'm doing right and wrong. A lot of people tell me what I'm doing wrong. I can handle it. So there you have it. Make sure you subscribe, stay tuned. I've got more videos coming up and as usual, Thank you very much to carolinadrones.com for bringing these videos out and helping me with all the parts I need to make these videos. So thank you to carolinadrones.com. If you have not checked out their website yet, do check it out. And also if you think about buying any drone, give Frank at carolinadrones.com a call and let him see if he can earn your business. Thanks guys, make sure you stay tuned. We've got more videos coming up.